Hello there everybody, this is Marvelvania13 here, and welcome to my Lord of the Rings Online versus WoW, or World of Warcraft, in class comparisons. I never exactly did a comparison side by side to each other before, so this is gonna be this is gonna be great. Alright, let's see here. We gotta go to new character so y'all get an idea of what I mean by comparison. Okay, and so for right now, we have the race of man. And it says not as long lived as elves are as sturdy as dwarves or resilient as hobbits. Men are renowned for their courage and resourcefulness. And the only class that can do that is a captain. Because look, dwarves can't be captains, hobbits can't be captains, elves can't be captains, and Bjarnings cannot be captains. But anyways, we're going to go through this list one at a time and stuff like that. And for right now, we're at the, at the um, race of men. And the race of men has 15 fate because they are, have a greater destiny than all the other races. And diminishing of mankind, which means that they could be corrupted at times. So that is why they have less willpower. And easily inspired. Increased morale regeneration, I mean restoration. Men are quickly emboldened than other races. Which means we just get back and go back to the fight. Even if the enemies try to push us down and stuff. And improved strength. The feats of man. The feats of strength of men that such as Boromir could accomplish are worthy of some. Hell yeah. I have to admit one thing for sure. Boromir is, is a pretty much of a badass. The age of man is fast approaching. The chosen of a higher power, men dominate the lands of Middle-earth, both west and east of the Misty Mountains. Their strength of will and prowess at arms will decide the fate of Middle-earth, whether for good or for ill. Which means that uh, there could be some... Some men that could be on the bad side, which I think one would be the Eastern men, or or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. All I know is Eastern men, or something like that. And for right now, we'll be doing the burglar first. We're going through down this list here. Okay, and it says here the class difficulty of a burglar is advanced, which means that you have to be taking a lot of practice into being a burglar. Well, that's just from my opinion anyway, because I never exactly played as one before. Maybe you all can tell me down in the comments below on which of the classes over here that I should play next. Okay, and the role is support, and, and it says here that the burglars are, are masters of debuffing skills. I mean, masters of debuffing, I'm sorry, I definitely gotta start reading better. Um, let's see here. Skills that cause his foes to deal less damage or be easier to kill. They utilize their trick skills to debuff foes and can later remove tricks for additional benefits. Burglars also have stealth skills and are proficient at initiating fellowship maneuvers. Fellowships in, in fellowships, a burglar supports his allies while debuffing foes while dealing respectable damage. I technically had a sparring match against a burglar when I was in the Entenbors, which is the Lord of the Rings Online version of a PvP map. And a burglar just cut me down to shreds. <laughs> Guessing I work on my meditations or defense at that point. And right now it says Burglars are masters of stealth and misdirection. They rely on sleight of hand and startling attacks, which means they technically have to sneak attack to win. But that's just from my opinion and judging from what this thing is telling me. And 
ideas that allow their companions to overwhelm their adversaries. This class is inspired by Bilbo Baggins, who accompanied Thorin and, and company on their quest to the Lonely Mountain. I bet when the, when the first Hobbit movie came out, a lot of people wanted to be burglars. Alright, and next we have the Captain. The Captain is pretty difficult to do, that's why it says moderate. It's like it's easy, but it's sometimes it's a little hard because no the you have that you have to switch the uh, trait lines to fit the situation. Like I have been a captain for about three years now, and still I don't know a lot of. I am not a master at being a captain, but still I do my best to help people out. But anyways, moderate, which means that it takes some practice to get used to being a captain. Because I had the same, I was mentoring a a kenmate of mine who goes by the name of Honorel, which she was indeed uh, a hunter for most of her um, L O T R O days. And so hunters are mostly just point and shoot, but for the cat, this is totally different. You'll see what I mean in the next cat this one on one video. But for right now, we are support role. And it says captains are armored melee fighters and masters of buffing skills that enhance allies. Which means that we buff up our buff up our team and provide as backup for healing or backup as tanking or backup as to support with DPS through skills and stuff. A lot of people say captains rock. And let's see here, they may summon Herald companions to fight by their side, which is a D2, because we have, we captains have Heralds that have special abilities, like, uh, the, um, hmm, the, uh, ah, the Herald of Victory has minus 10% power usage, and the Her Herald of Hope has minus 3%, I think it's plus 3% on make uh, physical mutation and tactical mutation. And I think we got the Herald of War, which increases your group's um, damage by 3% from melee to range. And, and we also got an Archer Herald, which should be able to provide some extra, a tiny bit, or a little, or something like that, of range DPS. And we they have always have an ally to buff. They also mark foes, giving benefits to all who attack them. If it shifts, the captain supports his allies with healing and buffs while still dealing respectable damage. Oh, that is indeed true. Captains are not the masters of any one trait. I mean, not, we're not masters of healing. We're not masters of tanking. We're not masters of DPS. Either. Where it just be useful is to support the groups in whatever situation we can. And I say a lot of things about captains because I have been a captain for uh, about three years now. And I tried to do the um, other classes before, but then a lot of people were saying, please help us out in our groups, which I'm not saying that in a bad way. Because normally as a captain, I have to do my best to help out people in need and stuff like that. But for right now, it says captains of Middle Earth hold the future in their hands by their own strength of arms and inspiration. They instill in others. They must lead the free peoples to victory. The class is inspired by Aranor, the last king of Gondor, who was revered both as a captain skilled in arms and as a lore master. Which I think that's why we have our pets. Because lore masters also have um, animal pets, like birds and stuff. So let's go ahead and watch a class. The captain, the captain is a masterful leader, a commanding presence who strengthens her allies, but she is also skilled in the use of arms. Her battle cries strike fear into the hearts of her enemies, while her allies rally to her banners of war. Alright. Well, that was pretty cool. 
Well, anyway, so we're gonna go to the next list. I guess I really am trying my best to give out as much detail as I can on this comparison, but at the same time, make sure that this video does not become too long. So please bear with me if it ends up being long. Alright, and we got ourselves the champion, which is class difficulty is basic because all you got to do is to kill things. And that's what it says here, damage. And it says champions wade into battle, swinging their weapons in all directions, dealing significant damage to many foes at once, which means that this is the AoE, which is known as area of effect damage. Type class, but that's just from my opinion. Maybe you all can tell me down in the comments below on stuff I missed, or your opinions on if my um, if my comparison is indeed correct or not correct or something like that. But anyways, uh, which one was I? At? Oh yeah, here we go. Which each strike that our prayer fervor grows, allowing them to use even more potent skills. Special stances may be used to increase damage dealt at the cost of defense, which is indeed true because as a captain I had to sacrifice offense, I mean I had to sacrifice some offense for defense, and then I, for the red line I had to sacrifice some defense for more offense, which that's what it's saying here too, greatly increases damage, let's see here, which one was I at? Ah, here we go, damage dealt at the cost of defense and or enhanced defense at the cost of damage. In fellowships, a, a champion concentrates on engaging as many foes as possible. Unrelenting in battle, the champions are consummate warriors. A champion cares not only, I mean, cares not for his own well being, but relies on his strength and prowess to slay the enemy before they bring more destruction to Middle Earth. And this was indeed inspired by Gimli, the son of Glowing, whose skill in arms matched the bow skills of Legolas. Let's go ahead and watch the Champion's class movie. The Champion is the consummate warrior. Unrelenting in battle, his fervor allows him to make increasingly powerful attacks, dealing great damage quickly and efficiently. Oh, that had to hurt. Alright. And now, we got ourselves the Guardian. Which the Guardian is basic, which is your main tank. Because you can all see here, the role is defense. Which we see is more suited for our, um, for tanking. And Guardians wear many heavy, I mean, wear heavy armor and have many defensive skills that allows them to survive battles against the most fearsome foes. The Guardians also have skills that draw foes' attention away from their allies to them and to themselves. In fellowships, the Guardian forces enemies to attack himself, so his more fragile allies will not be harmed by the foe. The Guardians, and I mean the Lord says that the Guardians are the stout protectors of the weak. And defenders of those in need, loyal companions to the end, a true guardian stand in the forefront of battle, shielding their allies from the enemy's assault. And this was inspired by Samwise Genji, whose loyalty to Frodo Baggins knew no bounds. Which means that Sam thinks that he's like the best friend to Frodo. And so as any best friend would do, is to have their friends back. And so that is why he is Samwise Gamgee inspired. So let's go ahead and watch the movie. On the the Guardian. Guardian is a protector of the weak and defender of those in need. He is capable of withstanding mighty blows and retaliating in kind. The true Guardian stands to the forefront of battle, shielding his allies from the blow of their enemies. Man, the Guardians are definitely badass. Which Guardians are awesome, by the way. 
And for right now, we have the Hunter, who is just a point shoot kind of class. Yeah, all I gotta do is just to line him up, and the Hunters will just shoot him up and from range. He class difficulties basic. Once again, point shoot. Roll this damage. They're the nuker. They're the nuker kind of class, and the hunters are proficient at dealing significant damage to a single foe at long range. Their basic foe skills generate focus points, allowing them to use even more potent skills. If a foe manages to close into melee, the hunters' dual wielded weapons are capable of the final blow. The a hunter concentrates on quickly killing foes one at a time. The lore of the hunter is that hunters are masters of field and forest. Unmatched in their dexterity with the bow, they use their survival skills to guide companions and lay traps for enemies. The coming of the enemy has forced them to adapt these skills to use against new prey. This class was inspired by Legolas. Which was indeed true because in the movies, and I think perhaps even in the books, that Legolas would normally use the bow. But as you all can see in the uh, movie, The Hobbit in Lord of the Rings, that he would use daggers for close quarter combat. But he does try his best to make sure that he's split from the enemy, like, uh, pick them out of range, and then just go whatever is left over from the enemy in melee range. Well, that's just from my opinion anyway. Once again, you can correct me if I am wrong in the comments below. Or just about anything. Alright, and it says here this class was inspired by Legolas, Prince of Mirkwood, a mighty hunter and companion of Aragorn. Let's go watch the class. The hunter this one. is a master of field and forest, unmatched with the bow. She uses her survival skills to guide her companion and lay traps for her enemies. The hunter is at her strongest when attacking from a distance, but is able to defend herself in melee at need. Now that was something. That was a hunter's... I sparred against a hunter before in the, um, in the game here, in the Entomars. And the hunter was really quite good. I mean, like, the hunter got away from me because, because that hunter would know that that person is screwed against the melee from a melee enemy. So, the hunter would just get away from me and just shoot me down with a range and traps. I mean, with a range attacks and then use traps to hold me at bay. And then once I am almost, then once I am almost dead, she just comes right up to me and then deals the final blow. And now we have the and we got a lore master and the class difficulty as advanced once again. Practice makes perfect kind of class. Well, that's just from my opinion. Some of you all may have played other MMOs that have similar things, so you all would know what to do if you're a lore master then. <clears throat> Role is support, but it's not like a burglar support or captain support because lore masters are indeed masters of crowd control. Well, burglars use for debuffing and stuff. And it's see here, role is support, and lore masters are the masters of crowd control. The um, they trap foes and keep them from fighting. And they call on animal companions to fight by their side and even call elemental forces to deal damage to their foes. Oh, to damage their foes. I'm sorry, I think we gotta start reading better. In fellowships, the war master concentrates on supporting his allies primarily by hindering the foe's ability to deal damage. The lore says that the war masters are seekers of knowledge and the guardians of wisdom. Through study of bygone ages, they learn ancient secrets that allow them to hinder foes, as well as protect against dark powers of the enemy. They have many skills that invoke the natural world of Middle-earth, but it's draining the, on the will 
plus the costly damn morale to fuel some of these powerful skills, which means that these guys are like mages in a way that you have to sacrifice some of your blood or morale, they call it in this game, to come up to use more power. Thing like what captains would do at times, like reforming the line if we are going to be putting out some more healing at the cost of about half of our morale. And that's just from a captain's point of view. But anyways, the class was inspired by Elf um, Half Elven, the Elf Lord and Master of Rivendell. Let's watch this. The Lore class Master movie. is a seeker of knowledge and a guardian of wisdom. He wields ancient secrets and lore to confound his foes and aid his friends, protecting them against the dark powers of the enemy. Aw, oh, that, that was pretty sick. I thought the War Master was indeed inspired by Gandalf. But yes, as you all can see here, Gandalf carried a, a cane or a staff of some kind, and they also carry swords. Let me see here. As you all can see here, from the way that he has his hand like this, which means he would have a sword in his hand at some point, but that's when you level up your lore master more. And we have the minstrel, who I call the guitar hero of the classes. Because the class difficulty is moderate, which means that you have to do some practice to be good minstrel, but that's just from my opinion anyway, because I was in a group when the group leader kicked out two minstrels from the group because from what he or she was saying to me at the time is that they had no idea on what they're doing. And so training a, or for training two minstrels for one captain, that is a bit sad for my book. But, yeah, and it says here the role is healer, in the gameplay says the minstrels are known for their healing abilities and are capable of dealing respectable damage with war speech. They have a variety of support skills and special ballads. Using a ballad, guitar rocking, <laughs> um, my Let's see here. Using ballads unlock more potential potent ballads, which accumulate with powerful anthems. Which the which the minis definitely have their own personal rock anthem. I don't know much about minis, but I know they have a rock anthem. I'm kidding. They have a lot of anthems. Um, let's see here. In fellowships, a minstrel keeps his allies healed and supported. Nice. The lore of this is, Middle Earth is a land deeply infused with music and true minstrels <clears throat> excuse me, are skilled at tapping into that power. Weave songs and tales so stirring that their companions' morale will not fail. Which is indeed true, my butt was saved by a minstrel lots of times, tons of times even and perform greater feats of prowess. They can use utter words of true power and ward against the forces of darkness with their anthems, which was indeed pretty cool. Knowing that they could use their guitar hero skills to good use. And this class was inspired by Luthien to Winneville, I think I'm saying that right, whose elephant voice be gold, friend and foe alike. Freak yeah. And now we have... Let's go ahead and do this. The minstrel is the heart of a fellowship. A herald of hope and renewal. He uses his knowledge of ancient songs and lore to ward against the forces of darkness and bring relief to his companions. Well, okay. I have to admit the minstrels were badass as well. And now we have the Warden, which you definitely have to do practice makes perfect, but that's just from my opinion. Because I know some friends of mine from several years ago who played as a Warden, 
And then people say that that person sucked at being a warden. So yeah, they do great damage with their bleed attacks, which I think they're pretty awesome. I sparred against a warden before and end up losing because their abilities are far surpassed the captain's ability. But that's just from my opinion. Once again, comment down below on your opinions on the classes. Or suggest me if I'm wrong and stuff. Oh well. Okay, let's see here. Class difficulty and fast. Roll defense. Wardens are mobile. I mean, I mean, the gameplay is wardens are mobile melee combatants who uses javelins for initiating combat against the ranged foes. I mean, for ear initiating combat against ranged foes, they are unique warden shields, which I do believe they represent the pike phalanx, as you all can see here. The um, the spear would be the sarissa. Our sister from ancient Greece and the shield will have a little special the warden shields will have like a special curve I think at the top of the shield which would be I think here and that's um, matter of fact it was, should be like right about here that they have a special curve and that is for fitting their spheres into but anyways they're unique for them of uh, okay, here, here we go their unique warden shields and variety of defensive skills allows them to stay, a stay in a fight longer than most. Uh, basic warden skills build their gambit chain, which can be spent to unleash special gambit skills and fellowships or warden forces enemies to attack himself, so his more fragile allies will not be harmed by the foe. Z and the lore is that the wardens patrol the borders of civilized lands preventing the encroachment of fellow creatures other from the wild. They limit themselves to medium armor so they can travel swiftly, which is indeed like a Macedonian pike phalanx. They, they also had to use light armor because they had to carry those big shields and stay in formation, so they had to wear a medium armor or light armor to keep them maneuverable. Okay, so so that they can travel swiftly and silently to defend those they protect from threats. Wardens have all the military training, like a pike phalanx, and mastered a style of combat that uses combinations of attacks to create masterful gambits. And this class was inspired by the March Warden of Lothorian, Haldir, and his brother Rumel and Orofin. The warden is the master of the spear and javelin. Sworn to protect those that cannot protect okay. themselves. At home, in the thick of melee, the warden weaves powerful combinations of attack to fell her foes and strengthen her own resolve against the Dark Lord. So that was just awesome. Perhaps I should be a warden someday as I make up uh, another character. Maybe you can suggest down in the comments below or what is the next class you all want me to do for this Lord of the Rings game. Oh yeah, I forgot about the uh, Room Keeper and the Arnie. Okay, um, let's see here. Are we gotta go to Dwarf. And the Dwarves are Dwellers of Stone and Miners of Metal. The Dwarves are a doughty folk, resistant to the corruption of the enemy, but not to greed. Which was indeed true, because in the Hobbit movies, that the um, king of Erebor, before Smaug came, was indeed um, was a good person at one time, but then the king of Erebor saw all his treasure, and and he was so greedy at that time, and that made Thorin greedy as well. 
I mean, I had to admit, I would have been greedy too if I seen all that treasure with my own eyes. And it says sturdiness, which you get increased might, fatality, and common damage mutation. Dwarves are sturdy race, which means that I think dwarves would be a perfect tank. And stocky, which is reduced agility. Dwarves are less agile than other classes, I mean races. And Dwarves of the Lost Kingdom. Reduced fate, the Dwarves' time in Middle-earth is fading. And unwary in battle. Bonus to morale and power regeneration in combat. Penalty to morale and power regeneration out of combat. Okay, so these guys are like Spartans in a way. That they only can get their adrenaline from battle and allows them to use one-handed axes. Axes have a small chance of reducing targets armor. Hell yeah, let's go ahead and watch this movie. Calling the mountains and hills home, the dwarves are a sturdy folk, dour-handed warriors, but also crafters of great skill. Many of their ancient halls lie in ruin, but their battle cry still resounds across Middle-earth. Baruch, Kazad, Kazad, Aymenu. Oh, that, oh, that one. Yeah, I remember that. The, um, the, um, Dwarven Guardian I saw that was randomly in, um, South Bree said that out loud, and I was like, dude, that is so cool. And it freaking scared the crap out of me, too. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. Let me do in the Hobbit race. Um, we got the small size. Reduced might. Hobbits lack the physical strength of other race. Hobbit toughness. Improved vitality are remarkably tough. Which is indeed true, too. Hobbits are tough sons of guns. I would know. I sparred against one. And rapid recovery. Improved morale regeneration out of combat. Hobbits recover from trying times faster than other races. Which just means that the hobbits like to relax a lot more. And go fishing and stuff. And hobbit courage. Improved fear resistance to slow kindled courage. Of the Hobbit race. And it's just corruption, which means that they say no to gold, no to places in power, and stuff like that. Which makes it pretty badass. Hailing from the rolling green hills of the Shire and the rustic towns of Breland, Hobbits are a simple folk, favoring food and good cheer above all else. But deep within, even the meekest hobbit burns a spark of courage, waiting to be kindled. Freak yeah! Alright, and now we have the elf. Oh, here we go. Now we can do a room keeper. So, let's see here. So, room keeper's class difficulty is moderate. And they have a damage and healer, which means they can do damage, but they have to switch trees if you want to focus on one thing or the other. And it says room keepers must choose during each battle to focus on damaging skills or healing skills. Either choice will shift their attunement, which means like um, I seen a room keeper who has a fire rock or is it a lava rock i'm not exactly sure and that is indeed a a damaging rock and then also there is a rock for healing which i don't know what that one is called and let's see here they okay here we go i was right here shifting no 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 unlocking more potent skills but Restricting access to others. In addition, they have support skills that always have been in use. 
and fellowship of, and fellowships, room keepers keep allies alive by healing or deal significant damage to foes. Okay, the lore of this one is the room keepers are gifted linguists and masters of true names. With the knowledge of a room keeper, crafts powerful room words that help the free peoples, known as freeps, through unparalleled mastery of Angrithias, I think, or Angrithas, yeah, Angrithas, and Tangwa runes. A room keeper evokes much more than normal scribe. Dragor runes deal, deal with battle, which is damage, Nestiad for healing, and Thalus for support. And this class is inspired by the master elf smith Calibrimbor, whose skill with runes of power was unparalleled, which means that this class was indeed inspired by the one who crafted the rings of power and inscribing the master rings, master ring of Sauron, or something like that. Maybe y'all can tell me down in the comments below on what Celebrimor does, because I, I did in fact play Shadows of Mordor, but there's a lot for me to remember about Agility of the Wood, and Fading of the Firstborn, Reduced Fate, the time of the Elves in Middle-Earth is nearly at its end, and Suffer No Illness, which means they are more disease-resistant and poison-resistant than any other, other race there is. Let's go ahead and watch the race movie on this one. The kindred of the Elves dwell among the woods and dells, lingering in Middle-Earth out of of for the land. Though their, el their glory is diminished, and the day draws near when they must cross the sea, those who remain continue the ancient struggle against the shadow of the enemy. Man, that's a bit sad, but pretty badass too, knowing that the elves would be out there trying to get over to the undying lands of the west and stuff like that and for right now we are the Bjarnings the Bjarnings are a descendant of ancient men and can skin change into bears which you all have seen in that part in the um in the battle of the five armies the hobbit movie where you would see this one guy who can shape shift to a bear and, and this is a Bjarning from that movie. And they are gruff, distrustful, impolite, and respectful to all things, I mean, respect to all creatures of nature. And hate orcs more than anything, because they trash the forest and stuff like that. And the orcs better stop littering in these Bjarnix forests, otherwise the Bjarnix will be mad and decided to call out the park rangers and say, no littering, or I'll gnaw your heads off. Well, that's what I would do anyway. Well, let's see here. Might of the Wild. Increased Might. The Arnings wield a ferocity unmatched by other races. Which means they get pissed. Like the Incredible Hulk. And it says here, Few in Numbers. Reduced Feet. So, few in Numbers. The Bjarning Fate is in question. Um, it says Natural Resistance. Which means they have been living in the forest for quite some time that they get used to living outdoors. And that's how they get natural resistance, which improves poison resistance. Their bond with the natural world gives Bjarnings a natural resistance toxin. And thick hides. Increased vitality, Bjarnings are thick skin. Which means they're not like any they're not like the other classes. Their skin can take a beating too. And let's go ahead and watch the movie. 
Oh yeah, as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do this first. Class difficulty advanced, which means for me, in my opinion, is that you have to learn your class. And you have to do practice makes perfect kind of thing. And the uh, role is damage and support, and the beyondings are skin changers that can change into the form of a bear in combat. They focus their wrath, which is indeed the, uh, the Incredible Hulk's anger, to ch change it to the Incredible Hulk. The more angry they are, the more damage they can do. They focus wrath and bear farm, choosing deals the grievous blows are bolstered their own resolve. While skilled in combat, the Bjornings also choose to wield their knowledge of the wilderness to assist their allies. And the lore of this is that the Bjorning of Middle Earth are largely reclusive people and they trace themselves now they trace their ancestry to Bjorn himself. And spent most of their time in the deep wilderness. The and most of their time in yeah, there we go. The solitude of the forest gives little comfort in recent times with the enemy approaching from all sides. The time has come for the descendants of Bjorn to lend their strength at the free peoples of Middle-earth. The class was inspired by Bjorn, who bravely stood with the free peoples during the Battle of the Five Armies. Men and women of Bjorn's line possess the power to take the shape of mighty and fearsome bears as their are increases, so too do the strength and capabilities of their animal forms. The Bayoning can harness this ability to deal damage, resist the onslaught of enemies, or, or support a fellowship of adventurers. Well, that was, well, that was pretty cool, really. And also, for every race, he could choose between female and male, which is indeed pretty cool too. I mean, very cool. Yes. And now we're going to go to monster play. And since I did say that I will be, I'll be doing a comparison between World of Warcraft and Lord of the Rings Online, which means that I am going to go into monster play so I can show you all the um, the equivalent of the horde, the Free Peoples of Middle Earth is like the Alliance, and the monster play represents the Horde. And as you all can see here, these are the classes. We got the Reaver, which is indeed the polar opposite of the um, of the Champion, if I am correct, because they can do wield weapons and do damage. And since I have a, have a premium account, I have to buy all the other classes. And so, I only have the Reaver as the free one. And, and, the, and the Spider, known as the Weaver, is the polar opposite of the, um, of the Lore Master. Because they also do crowd, <coughs> crowd control and stuff like that. The Black Arrow, the polar opposite of the Hunter. Hey, what's up, big chested Hunter? Uh, I mean, big chested, um, Uruk. And we have the War Leader, who is the, the polar opposite of a captain. Well, in fact, I gotta go ahead and show you what, we, what Reavers do. I'm sorry. And. Reavers have the skills of impale and other lead attacks, if I am correct, because these guys are like champions, so if you know what a champion is, then you would know what a Reaver is. But if I am wrong, correct me in the comments section below. And now we have the Reavers, I mean Weaver again, as I forgot to tell you in the first place of what a Weaver does. Uh, weavers lay down their webs to slow down their enemies. And they also inject poison into you while in melee range. Like if you're a melee fighter, this spider would sting you with multiple poisons. Just like a lore master, they put out their debuffs and um, or something for using for crowd control to lessen the 
damage and to, um, you know, just technically kill everything. And we got the um, Black Arrow. They have the skills of a hunter in a way. They also lay down traps, but these are special kind of traps. They're not like hunter traps. They, one of them, I think, is burning oil on the ground. I'm not exactly sure, but maybe you all can tell me down in the comments below once again of uh, what a black arrow does. Because all I know is that the black arrows are the polar opposite of the hunter. And now we are here with the war leader, which I know a lot about these guys because I am a captain most of the time. And the cap and the war leader is like a captain. They um, buff people, like uh, they put they plant down their banners to buff their own, and then also put down. Matter of fact, they use banners to buff up uh, their own people. And then those same banners buff, uh, I mean, debuff the Freeps, which will definitely have a very big advantage over the Freeps if that was the case. I got my butt kicked by a war leader, but I managed to get my revenge and kill him. Because the Captain Forces War Leader matches end up being an hour long. And we have the Warg, or known as Stalker. Oh, he's a cute little stalker. That's right, you are. And the warg, our stalker, is the um, is the polar opposite of a burglar. Like they could turn, they could go in stealth. They can um debuff you. They can um lay down puddles of their own urine to debuff the um to debuff the creeps. And. All other things. And next, and finally, the Defiler. The, t the toughest class I have ever seen, ever. I have seen Defilers actually out heal a, um, a, a freight of 12 people. Can you actually imagine that? Just one of these guys can out heal 12 people. That's how scary they are. And they are like the, um, I think these guys are like the lore masters in a way. I am not exactly sure. Yeah, but if I am correct, these guys are definitely like lore masters because they carry their sticks like lore masters. They can summon flies like um I yeah, they can summon flies and um I think other things like lore masters. I'm not exactly sure. But anyways, I think that'll do for now on this comparison. I mean, this part of the comparison of the Lord of the Rings Online versus WoW comparison, but I'll be right back with the um, World of Warcraft comparison. Okay, okay, and now to the uh, World of Warcraft class comparison. And right now, we're going to be the warrior. And let's see what we can learn about the warrior. Right here we go, more info. And it says the warrior is the is the tank and damage. And it uses heavy armor, mail, and plate shield and plate and shield. Deals damage with melee weapons. Has three fighting stances with different benefits and uses range as a resource. Which I think that is like a guardian in a way. If I were to compare the two. Alright, uh, let's see here what could be a... Uh... uh yeah, I think I will do this one as a tank. Just for now. Okay, warriors are plate wearing fighters who strive to per strive for perfection in armed combat. As warriors deal damage, they generate rage. Which is used to power special attacks. Power, I mean, <clears throat> warriors also can choose to focus on two headed weapons, dual wielding or sword and shield. Warriors have several abilities and let them move quickly around the battlefield. Their primary stat is strength. Through tanking, warriors desire stamina as well. 
So I'm guessing that this is a mixture between a guardian and another. Uh, um, hmm. I think this one here would be a champion, I think. Because technically, champs can guard and. I mean, champs can tank and do damage. Yeah, so I want to call this one a champion. If I were to make a comparison, maybe you'll have to tell me in the comments below because. Once again, I was going to say this in the beginning of the video that this is my very first um, comparisons between two games. So please bear with me. Alright. And right now we have the Paladin, who is a tank, healer, and damage, which is, like a, which is a captain in a way. And they wear heavy armor and plate and shield, which means they can do sword and shield. Um, they can do, I think, just about any weapon, I think. Except for, I think, ranged weapons? I'm not exactly sure. Um, righteous Vanquishers of Evil. And deals holy damage and melee damage. Which, in Lord of the Rings Online, there, a captain can deal light damage on certain skills. So, like, um, the Blade of Elendil in Lord of the Rings Online is that you can deal light damage to your enemy. And then, uh, there was another one. I think Battle Shout, you can also do light damage to your enemy. So that is indeed, like, holy damage. And melee damage is like, um, it's like the Captain Suit too. And we have a variety of defensive spells, that is indeed true. If I were to compare this to a captain, I mean, if I were to compare a paladin to a captain, then... Then, yeah. That in the yellow line in captains, they also have defensive things like threatening shot to hold aggro, um... Bleeding attacks to hold aggro as well, um... And it looks like we got... Uses mana and holy powers as resources. Which is... A, which is totally different from being a captain because I think captains can only has power like mana it only has mana for their skills other than holy power and when it comes to a captain in Lord of the Rings I do not know which I don't know one thing for sure that we are indeed rank wishers of evil well, I like playing as a paladin in WoW when I do my previous WoW World of Warcraft videos. But anyways, paladins are heavily armored fighters and defenders who uses holy magic to heal wounds and combat evil, are relatively self-sufficient, and have many abilities targeted at death preventions, which is resurrections, which we got in captains too, like revive dead, dead allies. You get that a lot. And they can focus on two-headed weapons, a shield... I mean, let's see, two-headed weapons, shields, or healing. Their primary stats depends on the role, which is indeed like a captain does, except for in the captain, that you don't only have only one trait line, or specialization, you have three, that you can switch at any time. Like, I played a paladin, and I tried to switch my role to experiment on its um, healing capabilities and its tanking capabilities, but it seems it won't let me do that in this game, unless I am missing something. You all can tell me that in the comments below. Okay, the next is the Hunter, which is indeed like Lord of the Rings Online Hunter, as you all can see here. Got the bow. And this class has, let me see, I just want to make sure. Yep, this class has the pet of wolves. Which is cool. And it looks like we got rollless damage, medium armor, leather, and mail. Which means that they can't use plate armor. And emphasis on range damage and traps. Just like the Lord of the Rings Online Hunter. Where they have to where they can place traps and stuff, except for in Lord of the Rings Online, they do not have a wolf pet, even though I wish they do have a pet, so they know what it is like to have a pet that travels around with them, just like the lore master in um, 
the Guardian, I mean, Lore Master and Captain have. And it says here, Games Beast of your choice as lifelong companions. Good at leveling and soloing. Which is indeed true too, because in Lord of the Rings Online, they have... The Hunters are very good at leveling quickly. Because of their DPS. Yeah, Hunters are at home in the wilderness. And have special affinity for beasts. They have ranged weapons such as bows or guns. Is it, oh crap, they can use guns? No fair. But oh well. Mo most of the Hunters look to prefer bows anyway. Um, and they're pet to deal damage. They can use traps to cause damage or keep an enemy at bay. The hunter's primary stat is agility, like a uh, Lord of the Rings Online Hunter. And the rogue, which is indeed like the Lord of the Rings Online equivalent of the, um, of the burglar. As you all can see here, this is roll this damage. Medium. Armor is leather. The roll, however, is different in Lord of the Rings Online. Um, because in Lord of the Rings Online, the burglar's roll is to support, which is like debuffing and stuff. But, they also can wear leather armor. And as a matter of fact, burglars can do great amounts of damage too, due to misdirection and stuff like that. And this is emphasizes stealth and poisons and control. Builds up to 5 combo points to unleash finishing moves. Uses energy web uses energy as a resource. Which I think energy means mana or energy as in vitality. I don't know. Rogues often serve as assassins or scouts, though so many, so many are lone wolves as well. Rogues specialize in dual wielding a variety of weapons, and the iconic rogue weapon is the dagger, which is the same thing in Burglars and Lord of the Rings Online. They also do the um, weapons of daggers too, for auto crits and stuff. And rogues can often sneak around enemies and or attack an opponent from behind and finish them off quickly. Their primary stat is agility, which is like burg burglars too, because burglars have the thing, I mean the, um, the stealth and the attacks of backstabbing and stuff like that. And so that's exactly like a burglar. And we've got the priest, which does look like the lore master. And it says here, healer and damage. And... Yeah, this is definitely like Lore Masters. And let's see here, heals damage. Heal damage with holy magic. Causes damage with shadow magic. Same thing like a Lore Master in a way, except for causing damages by summoning elemental, um, elemental attacks. And heals, I'm not sure about lore masters because I know they can in fact heal. I was my butt was saved by a lore master before. And it says uses mana as a resource. <clears throat> uses mana as a resource. Priests are well-rounded healers with a variety of tools. However, they can also sacrifice their healing to deal damage with shadow magic. Within society, priests act as spiritual leaders of their respective races. The so, priest primary st stats are intellect and spirit if healing. Okay, so the stats do change depending on what specialization they are on. Okay. Um, and now then for the mage. Matter of fact, I think priest, let's see here, is this one? Um, I think priest would normally be a minstrel in a way. Yeah. I don't know. I seriously don't know. There's some similar classes in this game that are similar to lore masters. But I do believe priest would definitely fit the role of lore master. And mage, which is damage. 
And it deals, let's see, light armor is cloth, and it deals in a frost fire or arcane magic damage. You can polymorph enemies or freeze them to the ground, which means that they can perhaps turn an enemy into a cat or a kitten. Or freeze them into the ground, which would definitely be useful for crowd control. And um, teleports to cities and conjure food and water. Okay, that is something that is totally cool. That's like um, being a um, an avatar in a way. Um, but you know the avatar from the Last Airbender. And uses mana as a resource. And it's his majors are iconic magic users of Azeroth. And learn their craft through intense research and study. They make up for their light armor with potent array of offensive and defensive spells. Their primary stat is intellect, which means the more intellect they have, the more the more mana they have, and the more mana they have, the more spells they can throw out. If I am correct. Or maybe intellect is mana regen? I am not sure. Once again, I am a total noob when it comes to World of Warcraft. Alright, and now we have the Warlock, uh, which is also damage. Huh. Matter of fact, the priest is... Oh, I see now. This here is the, um, the priest is the room keeper. The mage is the, um, is the lore master. And the warlock is the, um, if I were to compare this Lord of the Rings online, the, the warlock has to be, um, uh, uh. I'm not sure what a warlock, if I were to compare warlocks to Lord of the Rings Online. Ah. Uh. Okay, and their damage is, uh, the roll is damage. Their armor is cloth and summons demons to use demonic, demonic gifts to empower themselves. Empha emphasis on curses, drains, and damage over time spells. And can consume soul shards burning embers, or demonic fury for special abilities. Uses mana as a resource. Warlocks deal fire or shadow magic to damage, drain or curse their enemy. They summon demons as servants and can convert their health into mana. Or summon group members to their location. That is something that in Lord of the Rings Online is that only the hunters or the captains can only do that. In Lord of the Rings Online, that is. But for right now, this class looks pretty wicked. I mean, like, with that skull shirt and uh, shoulders and stuff. And that staff that she has. Looks like she could freaking kill you with that staff alone. But anyways, warlocks are feared in some alliance societies, while considered great leaders in some horde societies. As casters, the warlocks primary intellect. Stat is intellect. Okay, so it looks like we got intellect on this one for primary stat. <laughs> we got intellect on this one over here for primary stat. Now yeah, let's see about monk. Okay, and it looks like this one over here is also tank, damage, and healer. Which, uh, there's no class like this in Lord of the Rings Online. I know that for sure. There's no class like this. And there is no class like this in Lord of the Rings Online. So I don't know how in the world am I supposed to compare these two to Lord of the Rings Online classes. Oh, wait a minute. Masters of Martial Arts. This is a champion. No. Yeah, this is indeed a champion. Yeah. Totally, this is indeed a champion. Matter of fact, I don't know. Masters of Martial Arts is something that a champ would be in Lord of the Rings Online. So that means the warrior would have to be a pure melee class. So I am going to have to choose. Let's see. I just want to check uh, Warrior again. So this one over here has to be the Guardian then. Yeah, definitely Guardian. Because they can use shields and heavy armor mail. 
Yeah. This one over here is definitely going to be for guardians. Okay, I know. This is a guardian now. Okay. And now we're at the monk, which would be the champion. If I were to compare World of Warcraft to Lord of the Rings Online, this would be a champion. Okay. I don't know. But there could be a variety of things that champions can do. I know they can heal themselves in combat, I think. Yeah. So they wear medium armor, masters of martial arts, move quickly around a battlefield to avoid damage, and use chi energy and keep light and dark forces in harmony. The ancient monks of Pandaria uses their martial arts as a way of rebelling against their former overlords. Now rediscovering Pandarian have begun to spread their monastic teachings to the other races of Azeroth. Monks are known their skills in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Uh, definitely not a champion I think because I don't know. I have no clue whatsoever. I am actually clueless. Okay. Um, you all can tell me down in the comments below if you were to compare this game classes to a Lord of the Rings Online classes, maybe you all can give me some insight on what the classes are like. But anyways, uh, healing monks are profession in tra traditional medicine and often become spiritual leaders in their communities. Monk primarily stat depends on the role. For agility for tanking and melee fighters for tanking oh agility for tanking and melee fighters and intellect for healers. So which means I think the more intellect they have, the more healing they can do. Okay, let's see here if we can get that druid up. Here we go, we got a druid. Okay, and we got the role of tank. Damage and Healer. Man, I have no clue on this. On Man, I definitely have no clue. And it looks like they have Medium Armor for Leather, Shapeshifts into Animals and Forms, which I think I'll call this one a Bjarning. Yeah. If I were to compare this, it would be a Bjarning. Because they can shapeshift into Animal Forms, which in Lord of the Rings Online, the new class, if I am correct, if it is new, that the Bjarning would get mad and shapeshift into a bear. But at this one up here, this this druid can shapeshift into many animal forms. So yeah. And they also, the Bionix can also tank and deal damage and heal. So I'll call this one the Bionix of the wild classes. And druids are shapeshifters with the affinity of affinity for plant and animal kingdoms. There are three types of druids. Balance, Druids who cast nature or arcane spells at range. Barrel druids who can take on the form of a cat or a bear to fight in melee. Or restoration druids who can heal their allies with emphasis on heal over time spells. Druids primary stats depends on their role. Okay. And we got the Death Knight. Oh, that is so freaky. That is awesome. That is so awesome. That is freaking awesome. <laughs> Alright, let me see here. This is that is totally awesome. Let me see what it looks like in a blood elf. No, I think yeah, you know, night elves got this thing is pretty awesome. <laughs> Alright, I think I switched this over to me. Oh, that's even awesomer. That sword is bigger, let me see. Totally this sword this sword on the male side is beefier than on the female side. Which I do believe that the female side should have a little bit more armor because anyone can just go up to the stomach area and swing their sword into it and chop them in half. So they should definitely have the females to have more armor on them. Oh man, then the Death Knight is tank and damage. Matter of fact, I think the Death Knight would definitely be Guardians. Then I don't know. Okay, and it says tank and damage and the plate armor and former servants of the Lich King. And it starts at level 55. 
my god. That is seriously awesome. Look at that freaking cape. And the beefy sword that I've ever seen. And the head just screams out, I am going to kill you. And it combines melee combat with spells, diseases, and undead minions. It uses runes to... It uses runes of runic powers as resources. These former agents of the Scourge have now allied themselves with the Alliance or the Horde. Death Knights are a hero class, which means they start at higher high level. Death Knights use runes as their primary resource. Oh, the each three types runes is used for different abilities. Death Knights have more range capabilities than most. Melee range, I mean melee class with an emphasis on causing disease do, and doing damage with their undead pets. Their primary stats is strength and also stamina and tank. Well that is totally cool. Um, and now the races. We got the human. Increased versatility, bonus to reputation gains, and can break out of effects and remove limit or limit player control. Humans are a young race and thus highly versatile, mastering the art of combat, craftsmanship, and magic. With stunning efficiency, the human valor and optimism have led them to build some of the world's greatest kingdoms. In this troubled era, after generations of conflict, humanity seeks to rekindle its former glory and forge a shining new future. The dwarf has it may take on stone form, which is their like stone golems, an increased effect of, from critical strikes, resistant to frost damage, which they live up in the frosty mountains, like um, the misty mountains, and find additional archaeology fragments and survey faster, which means they're the masters of stone and mountain. In ages past, the dwarves cared only for the riches and taken from the earth's depths. Then record the surface of a godlike race, godlike race said to have given the dwarves life and an enchanted birthright. Driven to learn more, the dwarves devoted themselves to the pursuit of lost artifacts and knowledge. Today, dwarven archaeologists are scattered throughout the globe. Night elves can. Uh, can fade into shadow, more difficult to hit, wisp uh, while dead for faster movement, resistant to nature damage. This will go on forever, I'm sorry people. <laughs> um, let's see here. Faster movement while stealthed, faster attacks at night, increased critical chance during the day, which means that they can strike without fear in the night, and increase critical chances by day. Which means they are total badasses in a way. And tens of thousands of years ago, the Night Elven founded a vast empire, but their reckless use of primal magic brought them to ruin and greatly drew withdrew to the forests and remained isolated until the return of their ancient enemy, the Burning Legion. With no other choice, the Night Elves emerged from at last from their seclusion to fight for their place in the new world. And the gnomes. Oh, that's a cute little death knight gnome. Uh, oh, man. Let me see what they look like without being the death knights. Oh, uh, that's so cute. That's like a hobbit. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, now this... This game definitely has a lot more races than the... than Lord of the Rings Online, that's for sure. So this is definitely going to take me a while if I am going to do a total detailed comparison between the two games. Um, many escape from speed altering effects, increased resource pool, resistant to arcade magic, engineering skill increased, and attacks faster. Through small in stature, the clever gnome, the gnomes of Kazemodan, have used their great intellect to secure a place in history. Their subterranean kingdom of Nomagran, I think, 
is a marvel of steam-driven technology, which does remind me of the, um, uh, the Dwemer from Elder Scrolls. And their skill at both engineering and arcane arts have been a tremendous benefit to the art to the alliance across numerous campaigns. And oh man, this guy is freaky looking. And it was, was his jewel crafting skill increased, may heal self or others over time, increased intellect and strength, and shadow damage to resist. And this class's name is the Drainii. I think I'm saying that right, or Drainai, or something like that. Driven from their home world of Argus, the Honorable Drainai fled the Burning Legion for eons before finding a remote planet to settle on. They shared this world with the sh Shamastic Orcs and named it Draenor in the time the Legion corrupted the Orcs who waged war and nearly exterminated the peaceful Draenei. A lucky few fled to Azeroth where they seek allies in their battle against the Burning Legion. And we have the Wargrid. Huh? She, he can have a human pet? He can have a human pet. Is that, I don't know if that's a pet right there or he is just one badass looking pet. Oh, I don't know. Okay, uh, can periodically move quicker, and this class name is Wargrand. And resistant to nature and shadow damage, skinning skill and, and speed increased. Which means that he would be the perfect forester for making leather armor and stuff. Okay, the Wargrand were the first unleashed upon the Eastern Kingdoms by Archmage Argyll during the Third War. Primarily used as a weapon against the Scourge. <coughs> the beast soon proved to be a burden greater than the humans of Lordar Lordarian, yeah, could bear. A mysterious curse began to spread among those who fought alongside the Wolfmen, causing them to become Wargrin themselves. The curse rapidly spread as it reached. Gileanus. I think I'm saying that right. Trapping its inhabitants behind the very walls built to protect them. The survivors of the curse now seek to find a new fate for their people and their destiny unwritten. And now Pandarian. Ah! That, that's a cute panda. And oh man, why in the world am I being disconnected from the server? And I'm gonna have to sign in my stuff. I'll be right back. Back. I'm sorry for that. The um, the game must have disconnected me for unknown reasons. But anyways, oh, she's a cute little panda. Um. Oh, and it looks like the Pandarians are a neutral, which means they can join the Horde or the Alliance. They put enemies to sleep with a touch of their hand, because that is indeed true. Because their hands are so cute and furry. And inner peace means twice as much rested experience. And increased benefits from eating food. Yeah, that's a cute little panda eating your bamboo and stuff. Cooking skill increased. And bouncy and takes less falling damage. I don't know why they're bouncy. Do you all know why they're bouncy? Um, it says the shrouded in fog for ages. The ancient realm of Pandaria has remained unspoiled by war. Rediscovered, let's see here. Now that it has been rediscovered, Pandarian heroes are stepping forward to declare their allegiance to either the Alliance or Horde. The most adventurous of the Pandarian come from Wandering Island, a mysterious land cut from the east of Azeroth and Pandaria itself. Totally cool, and now it's a cute little panda, and now we are here with the orcs. Here's what a male orc looks like. That looks so cool. Too bad... Too bad I don't think that Lord of the Rings Online has an orc race. Because from what I've seen from the previous part of this video, that the, the only thing close enough to an orc is an uruk. Unless... The Reavers are orc. Yeah, I think Reavers are orcs. Never mind then. And it says may 
and range to increase damage, which means the more range they have, the more damage they can do, which would definitely be a good thing for being in a warrior class. And resistant to stun effects, which means this thing, you try to stun me, I'll just brush you off like a fly. The damage done by pets have increased. The orcs have originated on the peaceful planet Draenor. The I mean, on the planet of Draenor, a peaceful people with shamanistic beliefs. They were enslaved by the Burning Legion and forced into war with the humans of Azeroth. Although it may took many years, the orcs finally escaped the demons' corruption and won their freedom. To this day, they fight for honor in an alien world that hates and revels them. Okay, so orcs are badasses in the way. And we have the undead. Oh, that is so cool to get the undead race. Can remove fear, sleep, and charm. And they consume corpses to regain health and mana. Which means that if you're in a PvP or server or something like that, then you just gnaw on your opponent's flesh and you regain your, you gain your health and stuff. And you got I can drink health from enemies. Yep, yeah, definitely. Like you kill an enemy in PvP and you just suck the blood out of them. And resistant to shadow damage. Once mindless slaves to the terrible Lich King, the gruesome Forsaken have overthrown his rule. And now has pledged loyalty to the wicked Banshee Queen Sylvanas. Under her reign, Forsaken enemies have reclaimed the ruined kingdom of Mordarian. One every day is a struggle against vengeful humans who wish to wipe them out. And comes a constant battle of wills against horde allies who dispute the sinister motives of the undead. And we have the Tarin. Oh, it's a cute little, um... Uh, cute little, um... If I were to compare this to an animal, it would have to be a bull. Yeah, I'm gonna call you a bull. Yeah. It may stomp nearby enemies, increase stamina, herbalism and speed increase like a bull. Except for not herbalism, but speed is increasing by stomping too. And resistant to nature damage and increased effects of critical strikes. Always the Tarwin to preserve the balance of nature and heed the will of their goddess, the Earth Mother, many nomadic wandering tribes, the Tarin, have gathered together on a single banner to settle in the fertile plains of Moldor, where it is not timely intervention of the orcs, the whole race have, have been wiped out, I mean, the whole race may have been wiped out by a marauding centaur, the Tauren honor their blood debt to this day, fighting alongside the Horde to protect their lands. And we have the Troll. Totally different from the Lord of the Rings Online Troll, but still a very cool looking one too. And it says Berserk increased, attacks and casting speed, regeneration increased, the increased experience gain from killing beasts, hell yeah, and reduced duration of movement and pairing effects. And this guy saying that at home, the jungles of the... I can't say that word, I think the Stranglehorn? Yeah, Stranglethorn, yeah, Stranglethorn Vale. The fierce trolls of Dark Spirit Tribe were, were besieged by, on all sides by the warring factions. The Orcish Horde came to their aid, convincing the Dark Spear to sail across the Great Sea and it settled in the untamed lands of Cal Oh, wait a minute, I heard this word before. Kalimdor. Yeah, Kalimdor. Through the cling to shadowy heritage, Dark Spear remains vocal and advocated to the United Horde, leading the strength of their arms and powerful tribal magics to the common cause. And this is the Blood Elf. Which is totally different from... Looks like the High Elf from Elder Scrolls. Which is pretty cool looking. And he has enchanting skill increase, can restore... Su restore resources such as mana or energy. May sight many silence opponents. 
resistant to arcane damage. Oh, I don't really. Do I have to read all of this? Oh well, I'm just gonna read it all anyway. Uh, long ago, the majestic high elves, yep, high elves, created the splendid golden city of Belthalas, built around a magical plot of energy known as Sunwell. The, when the Lich King destroyed their capital in the Third War, the, the survivors turned to the Horde for help. Now known as the Blood Elves, they, these refugees are all that remains of their glorious civilization. They strive to rebuild Pelvalas while struggling against the crippling addiction to the very magical energies that once built their empire. Oh, the cute little goblin! Uh, can rocket jump forward and can launch rockets at enemies, receive vendors discount, which is awesome, and periodically summon a personal bank. <laughs> that is totally cool. And haste is increased, and alchemy skill and potion healing increased. Originally the slaves of the jungle trolls on the island of Kezin, the goblin race was forced to mine Kahamai Ore, uh, the other mine deep in the bowels of Mount Kaharo. Yeah, I think it's Kaharo. Or Kadro. I don't know. I'm my neck, blah, 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 blah. I can't say that word. To anyone at the time, the mineral. Let's see, which one was I on? Ah, the mineral ad increased properties that causes the goblins to rapidly increase at both cunning and intellect. The two green, their own powerful artifacts of engineering and alchemy and secret. The goblins overthrew their troll oppressors, taking over the island and that they now call home, quickly rising to prominence as masters of merchandising, which I'll call it that because I can't say this word right and goblins and their global trade conglomerate dominate all commerce across Azeroth. Okay, so it looks like I got a few ideas of how I can come up with ideas for class comparisons, but I will leave that up to you all to decide on how you want to do your own comparisons in the comments section below. But anyways, this is indeed Morrow Blaming 13 signing off, and I hope that you all have a good day.